in here in Starkville tonight. Yeah, and no better way to do it early in the season. I, uh, off to a, a rough start for Southern Miss, but Mississippi State has come out and looked really solid the first couple weeks of the season, but a good matchup on our hands tonight. The Bulldogs, as Cody mentioned, off to a really good start, 11 and three after the first 14 games of the season. Ranked in the top 25 in every single major softball poll. The Golden Eagles come in five and eight after a tough weekend last weekend at the Jacksonville Cocky Classic hosted by Jacksonville State. Josie Marin, the starting pitcher tonight for Mississippi State, leading hitter in the order for USM is Lauren Lindsay. First pitch was in there for a strike and we're underway here at News Park in Starkville. Swing and a miss, strike two. Marin quickly out in front on Lindsay. Yeah, and we, we, we've talked about just her ability to throw strikes early on and make batters chase. And two pitches in, already two strikes. See if she can keep it up the rest of this one. She gets the strikeout on three pitches against the leadoff hitter in the order, Lauren Lindsay. And Marin made that look easy. However, time called as soon as the out was recorded. I wonder if they called. That's Taryn Moet McKinney, the Bulldog pitching coach, who came out quickly to have a conversation with tonight's first base umpire, Michael Thibodeau. And I'm not sure what the. Yeah, the out was not recorded. This is still, so they called illegal pitch. We have not received official word, but I believe they called that illegal pitch. And now we have the strikeout against Lauren Lindsay. So I apologize there for the confusion, but we thought we had a strikeout on three pitches, but they had called illegal pitch on Marin. So the count there briefly was one ball, two strikes, and then Lindsay struck out swinging eventually on four pitches. A little bit of confusion early on, but nonetheless ends in a strikeout. Well, I knew something was up when as soon as we thought the strikeout had occurred, you saw MSU pitching coach Taryn Moat McKinney hustle out of the dugout and walk immediately over to the first base umpire. Although I never saw the illegal pitch call happen in real time. Hannah Borden, meanwhile, pulls one through into left field for a single. And the Golden Eagles have their first hit of the night. No surprise, it comes off the bat of Hannah Borden. Yeah, one of the better hitters for Southern Miss and just got solid contact, sent it into the ground and into left field and got to start the offense some way and that's one way to get it started. It wasn't a Borden bomb, but it was a solid single into left. Hit number 15 on the year for Borden. She leads USM. In that category, off-speed pitch from Marin in there for a strike. Against the right fielder for the Golden Eagles, number 23, Natalie Taylor, who's batting from the right side with one on and one gone here on the top of the first, just underway in Starkville. Bouncer sharply hit over to third, knocked down, picked up, but not in time. No throw attempted, and that should be scored. Well. I think it'll be scored an infield single. We'll see. Either way, the Golden Eagles have something brewing here in the first. Two on, one out. Yeah, we take a look at it here. Solid contact and hits it over to third to Barbary, and that's a tough ball to feel. Just an awkward bounce and probably made the right decision to hold it instead of hurry a throw to first and, and mistime it or throw it over the head of the first baseman. Uh, Madison Kennedy, so probably a smart play. And that will be scored as an error in E5. And after watching the replay, that's the right call. If Barbary fields that ball cleanly, which she normally does, tough hit ball, tough bounce, I get it, but if she fields it cleanly, then a good throw easily records the out. 
So the first error of the ball game, and it leaves the door open here for USM. We'll see if the Golden Eagles can capitalize with KK Agner. Kayla Agner, her name, but everyone calls her KK. Third baseman for USM. She's at the plate right now for the first time tonight, down in the count against Marin 0 and 2. Bouncer, deep to short. They're going to throw to third and get the lead runner there. Nicely done by the Bulldog infield as Edwards makes the play. Six to five to record the out on Borden for out number two. Yeah, and smart play by Edwards. Able to field it and get it over to third in time for the out. Would have loved to have the double play at first, just not in time, but puts you one out away to get out of this inning without allowing any runs. Made that throw from her knees to get Borden out at third base. So still two on for USM, but now there are two gone. The batter at the plate is the number five hitter in the lineup, Rihanna Valdivia. That ball missed, the count one and one on the right-handed hitting junior, Valdivia. Taylor at second, Agner at first. Two on, two gone. And the scoreboard actually says that the count should have been 2-0. and oh, So now the count's 2-1. and one. So two balls, one strike is the count. The 12th pitch of the inning right here for Marin. Sharply hit left side, but foul by a solid 5 to 10 feet over there near the bag at third. And the count evens up. Got deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on base. If only it were the second inning. Add a couple more there. Off speed, and there's the swing and a miss. Good job by Marin to get out of the jam. Her second strikeout tonight. Sierra Sacco will lead things off. With the Golden Eagle infield drawn in, Sacco shows bunt and then takes it outside. Ball one from USM right-handed pitcher Logan Stepp. A junior with a 3.36 ERA, two and one her record so far on the year. And again, Sacco shows bunt. This time it's in there for a strike and the count evens up at one and one. It'll be Sacco, followed by Nadia Barbary, then Paige Cook, the top three in the order for State. The middle of the Bulldog lineup tonight features Madison Kennedy, Salem Hawkins, and Aquana Brownlee. Sacco trying to slap one the opposite way, bounces it foul left side for strike two. The seven through nine hitters for Samantha Ricketts and the Bulldogs tonight, Ella Wesolowski, Kylie Edwards, and Briley St. Clair. It's a lineup with really good offensive numbers, Cody, through the first 14 ball games of the year. Yeah, a big improvement from what we saw last year. Struggled with, with hitting midway through the season and then towards the end of the season. And this offseason seems like they got to work, and it's been really impressive to watch. First couple weeks of the season have found ways to get on base to hit the base runners home. They've got a couple of home runs to add in there as well. Just really smart playing offensively for the Bulldogs. Sacco has now worked the count even at two balls and two strikes. A 333 hitter on the year, a junior transfer, a left-handed hitter from Louisiana Tech. Her first year playing for the maroon and white. Once again, trying to go the opposite way, fouls off and spoils that pitch. So we'll do it again. Count remains two and two on Sacco. She has started all 15 games of the year. In this, her first season for the SEC Bulldogs. 
as she moved over from the other Bulldogs there in Ruston, Louisiana. Bounces one over to short, throw to first is there just in time. Nicely done by McManus. And USM retires state's leadoff hitter. And that's why USM had the defense drawn in on Sacco, expecting a slap. And even though Sacco was able to chop it high off the dirt. Yeah, didn't not a whole lot to do when coming to make that play. Didn't have to move a whole lot, just had to field it cleanly. Toss it over to first and executed very well for McManus. So no one on and one gone as Nadia Barbary, a sophomore, right-handed hitting third baseman, steps in for Mississippi State. Fouled back, straight back in fact, and on top of the press box roof. You gotta always be leery of the ball rolling back <laughs> towards us. <laughs> Had it ha happened a couple of times. It is not very often, but every once in a while, we might have a little souvenir. Got to keep our head on the swivel. Trying to go with that pitch. It was up and away, and Barbary fouls it off to the right side. And, and she falls in the hole, nothing in two against Step. This will be the sixth appearance in the circle this year for Step, the right-handed junior. All of them have been as a starter. She's thrown 25 innings on the season. And solid numbers. I mean, she's been, I don't know if she's the most talented pitcher on USM's team. She might be, but she certainly has been the most consistent pitcher for them here in 2024. Yeah, it's only allowed 12 earned runs. She's got 15 strikeouts, has had herself a solid early part of the season. She's got herself a winning record. Not much more you can ask for. And she's been the pitcher of record in three of USM's first 13 ball games. They have five wins as a team. She has two of them. Popped it up again to Barbary, back and out of play again. This time it'll be in the seats. So a nice battle going on right here. Step in the circle and Barbary at the plate. Cold Thursday night, and I gotta be honest, a, a better crowd than I thought we might see tonight given the cold temperatures. Yeah, it, it's, it's chilly. If you didn't bring a blanket or a couple of jackets. You might be rethinking that now, but <laughs> we've got a nice filled stadium and I see a lot of blankets. Oh yeah, I mean, the folks who came out tonight, A, are real softball fans, and B, clearly have done this before because they came prepared. Up the middle, what an at-bat for Barbary. And she has State's first single, first hit of any kind tonight. And the Bulldogs have a runner on at first base with just one out. And Barbary made step, threw her a bunch of pitches, and then finally got one right there over the heart of the plate. And there was a lot of speed on that hit, too. I mean, just right up the center into center field, very low. Didn't look like it hit the ground until it went to the outfield, though. Cook hits one high in the air. Should be caught, though, and is caught at the track in center field by Gordon. So Cook didn't waste any time. Made contact on the first pitch she saw and gave it a ride deep to center field. Yeah, a lot of height on this hit ball and sends her all the way back to the warning track. Just needed a couple of more feet couldn't get it this time, but it's a good sign when you can see one of your star players get a deep hit like that early on. And it brings up the cleanup hitter, Madison Kennedy, who is having the best start 
of any season in her college career as she makes her 11th start of the season, batting over 400 at the moment for Mississippi State. Hits one high, hits one deep, hits one to the wall, and gone! Madison Kennedy continues her offensive assault here in 2024. That's a two-out, two-run shot, and the dogs are on the scoreboard, scoreboard first tonight, 2-0 in the first. Yeah, you talk about that 407 batting average. That just went up. Three home runs on the season now. Take a look at it and just right in the sweet spot. Sends it into right center field and dogs lead early two to nothing. You saw Cook give it a ride. Just one batter prior and perhaps Kennedy saw something in that very short at bat from Cook and she came up and the tall slugger knocked it out of the yard as Cody mentioned third home run of the year. Dogs are on the scoreboard first, and they've been out early on teams in most of their wins so far this year. Yeah, I think that's been a key for them, too, is able to get hits early, put some runs on the board, and then to back that up, when their hitting gets going early, the pitching has been stellar in these first uh, 14 games of the season. So it's just once they get out early, it's tough to come back against this team. 2 nothing. Mississippi State leads Southern Miss. There are two gone. And Salen Hawkins, a right-handed hitting freshman middle infielder at the plate for the Bulldogs. Gave that one a ride, but it's foul and into the corner of right field. So that'll be a strike, and the count's one and two on Hawkins. Well, USM was so close to getting out of the inning without any damage done. And then Kennedy, her 12th hit of the year, third home run to lead the team, changed things with one swing of the bat as Hawkins fouls that one left side this time as she was out in front. Count remains one and two. Teams are hitting almost 300 on the year against step. So she's been giving up a lot of hits on the year. That ball is lifted into center field, and there's another hit, the third Bulldog hit of the inning. Get step credit over the course of the year so far. Has done a good job getting out of jams, but she has put herself in a pickle more than just once or twice so far this year. Yeah, when you allow so many hits, you obviously give the opportunity to the other team to try and bat them in. And like you said, to her credit, she's allowed coming into this 25 hits and only allowed 12 earned runs. So, I mean, when you look at the ratio of hits to earned runs, I, I think you take it. She has, been, she has not given up a lot of extra base hits on the year, which makes the Kennedy at bat even more big when you put it in that context. So Hawkins runs at first. Aquana Brownlee is at the plate for the first time tonight. That ball down and in. Hawkins takes off for a second. Throw is just not quite there in time. It might have beaten her, but the tag just a hair too late. Stolen base for Hawkins. Take a look at it here, and it's close, but no caller safe. Good job by Hawkins to get into the bag quickly. The Bulldogs have run the bases more aggressively this year so far than they did last year. Again, not a team that's going to steal a ton of bases, but they have been fairly aggressive early on in ball games in terms of trying to move runners over. A 3-0 count to Brownlee with Wesolowski in the on-deck circle. Yeah, didn't think she had the green light there. She checked the swing. I think the whole entire plan there was to always check that swing. 
Yeah, and I think it's these situations that kind of get step into, into trouble. 20 walks coming in to this game, so throwing a, a bunch of free bases, yeah. essentially, and this is kind of the stuff you want to try and avoid, especially this early in a game with two outs. Brownlee hits one in the left. That will drive home the run. That makes that stolen base big as Hawkins scores easily on the two-out single to left off the bat of Brownlee. And the dogs are cooking here in the first, now on top by three. Yeah, nothing special, just a nice hit into left field. Was able to get it over the infield, and sometimes all you need is a single to score a run, and that'll do it for Aquana Brownlee. Timeout called by USM. They want to talk things over. Meeting in the circle, just the coach and the battery at the moment. USM is led, speaking of coaching staff, USM is led by their veteran head coach. This is only her second season in Hattiesburg, but Coach Poole has been around the block a time or two, head coach before this stint at Memphis, at McNeese State, and at Georgia Southern. Spent seven seasons at Georgia Southern there in Statesboro, Georgia. Then spent three seasons at her alma mater, McNeese State, before getting the head coaching gig at Memphis. Spent 11 seasons at Memphis, and this is now her second year in Hattiesburg coaching the Golden Eagles. My math is correct. Over 1,200 games coached. I mean, it's a lot of experience there. It's like a, a whole lot of softball. It's a veteran staff in that dugout for USM, the black and gold, looking to improve on what happened in 2023 where they certainly got better as the year went on, but are looking to capitalize on that momentum and take that proverbial next step this year in the Sun Belt Conference as that ball gets away from Borden, the catcher, and Brownlee takes off for second. The dogs are once again in scoring position, already on top by three here in the first. Yeah, and I think this is a, a key moment for them. You've had two outs for a while now. You need to find a way to get an out somehow. The 2-0 to Westolowski hit high in the air, fairly deep, but being tracked by Gordon and caught in left center field. That'll end the inning. State, though, is able to score three runs on four hits. Run lead to work with here in the top of the second. Marin will face the six through eight hitters in the USM lineup, Fox, Gordon, and Allen. And she fires a strike one in on Fox, the USM DP. Michaela Fox, a senior and a right-handed hitter. That rise ball taken high and the count evens up. The Bulldog battery tonight, Marin in the circle, and the freshman catcher is Ella Weselowski. Downstairs, chasing it was Fox, unable to golf it out of there. And the count's a ball on two strikes. Yeah, and something special about the pitchers and the bullpen for Mississippi State is their ability to not give up free bases. They are averaging less than a walk a game. So, I mean, everything that you get from Mississippi State is earned. It's not, you're not getting on base and hitting them home. I mean, you don't see it often. It just makes life very difficult for these hitters. They don't walk batters and conversely, they get lots of strikeouts, as you saw right there as Marin struck out Fox, her third K already of the ball game. And now is facing Kinsley Gordon, 
with no one on and one gone. That ball has some late movement to it and snuck in there and found the strike zone. And the count quickly, nothing and two on Gordon, a right-handed hitting outfielder for USM. Looked like it had some, some speed behind it too. And well, Gordon just got a piece of that one to stay alive. I think it may have deflected off of our home plate umpire, Shane Jackson. So time is called briefly by Wes Holowski. The numbers on the year for Marin, 4-0 and record in the circle, ERA of under two, 1.95 as Gordon hits one high in the air, shallow and left coming in is St. Clair. And the Bulldog senior left fielder makes the catch for out number two. This is the eighth appearance in the circle, sixth start of the year for the sophomore right-hander, Marin. She's already gone the distance twice and has thrown over 25 innings on the season. Now a slapper up there for USM. Allen hits the first pitch out to Edwards. The Bulldogs shortstop throws across in time and that was a quick one, two, three, top of the second as you Heck, it was in the 70s yesterday, and then we got a, a, a 10 minutes worth of <laughs> a, a rainstorm and then huh. walk outside, and it felt like it was 20 degrees. Listen, yesterday was one of those days here in the Golden Triangle of Mississippi where you could actually see the cold front moving through the area. Had over the course of about 12 hours a 45-degree change in temperature, I believe, here in Starkville. But today, a classic winter day, a classic February day. Happy Leap Day, by the way, February 29th. But one of those days where it was cold, cloudy. Thankfully, no rain, though, today. Clear skies tonight, just cold. Not a whole lot of breeze, but when, it, when there is, harsh. It's biting, yeah, but thankfully, no wind to speak of at the moment. Kylie Edwards is your batter for Mississippi State. The Bulldogs on top 3 nothing early on here against their in-state foes from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. 2-1 and one the count with step in the circle. Just misses the outside corner and the count is now a hitter's count. 3-1 and one on the freshman right-handed hitting shortstop Kylie Edwards up at the plate for the first time in the ball game. And I think she's gonna take all the way right there and Step did a really good job with a fastball. Rise ball up and in, count now full, three and two. Edwards, St. Clair, then top of the order, Sacco due up in the home half of the second. That ball comes in and hits Edwards. Got her, I think, on the left elbow right off that shield, and she'll take her free trip down to first base. The past couple of pitches had kind of been inside and getting real close to her. This time just couldn't keep it away from her, and like you said, right on that shield on the elbow, and she'll take a free base. Well, listen, if you're going to get hit, that's where you want to get hit. Right on that protective shield. So runner is on at first. No one out. Slap hitting number nine hitter, Briley St. Clair, up at the plate for the first time. And that ball, a rise ball, comes up and in and brushes St. Clair, the lefty hitter, back off the plate some. That ball misses low and outside. St. Clair flash bunt just for a half second, then brought back the bat. Count is 2-0 and on St. Clair, who bats ninth, but really is used almost like a second leadoff batter 
for Samantha Ricketts to roll the lineup back up to Sacco and Barbary. Runner takes off, could be a hit and run. Ball though is hit out to left where Allen makes the catch and Edwards has to hustle back to the bag at first. One on, one gone. Just put a little too much under it and allowed Allen to make the play and left field, you take a look at it here. Not a bad hit, just needed to get down quicker. Just too much time in the air. And a good job by Steph to elevate that rise ball just enough that St. Clair got underneath it. So top of the order, Sierra Sacco back up for her second at bat. She takes it upstairs, ball one. Sacco grounded out to the shortstop. McManus, her first time up. So Sacco is 0 for 1 so far in the ball game. State has four hits and have had five runners reach, or five hitters reach base so far against Logan Stett. Runner takes off, throw down is not in time. Second stolen base tonight for Mississippi State as Edwards goes in head first and gets the jersey a little dirty. Yeah, second stolen, second stolen base and I think another close call. I mean, it, it feels like the throw is on time, just can't get the tag in time. And I mean, both of these stolen bases have been within a second or two. And Borden's a good catcher, a good veteran catcher, not easy to steal on, but State's done it now twice, two for two in that category. And it's been the freshmen, Hawkins and Edwards, who have swiped the bases so far. Two balls and a strike on Sacco, who tries to slap one left side and hits it foul. It'll bounce eventually into the home dugout. And the count evens up two and two. We've mentioned step in the circle and boarding behind the plate for USM. The Golden Eagles have Lindsay at first. Valdivia at second, McManus at short, Agner at third. High and away, good take by Sacco to work the count full. In left field for Southern Miss is Allen, Gordon in center and Taylor in right. Edwards at second, one out, Sacco at the plate. And she works the count full and then draws a walk. Good job by Sacco, quality at bat. And the dogs once again have two runners on base. And that's another thing this Mississippi State batting lineup has done very well early on is work the pitch count. And uh, I mean, you see already 42 pitches We've got one out in the bottom of the second inning. So really making Step put in a lot of work early on, not something that you want if you're Southern Miss. She now faces Barbary. Barbary hits one high, hits one deep. Is it fair or foul in left? It is a fair ball. It is long gone. A three-run blast off the bat of Nadia Barbary. And the Bulldogs have opened things up here in the second. They now lead 6-0. Yeah, and I think you and I were both looking, is it fair, is it foul, is it fair, is it foul? And they're going to say it was fair, and boy, was it close. But that was, that was a heck of a hit. The only question was, would it stay fair? There was no doubt it was leaving the ballpark. You're not finding that ball if you're going to look. It might be, be on, on the, the highway. highway. <laughs> that was... I, I mean, that thing a flu. Wow. Now batting for the Bulldogs, number six, Paige
catches the outside corner. And the count is a ball and two strikes on Cook, who flew out deep to center field, as you mentioned a couple of minutes ago, Cody, her first time up in the first. And now facing White for the first time. That's a wasted pitch to even the count at two and two. Don't think it's a bad pitch. Try and get him to chase. Maybe just a little closer to the zone. Right idea, though. White, a one and three record on the year. And she misses outside again, counting out full. The ERA for White, 4.78. So the ERA a little bit elevated, but a tall, talented right-hander with a bright future in Hattiesburg. Swing and a miss, good pitch right there. She strikes out a good hitter in Paige Cook. Correction, the ERA, 3.72. Thank you, not 4.72. I got Paige Cook just swinging out of her boots. And it's a good way to start your day in the circle if you're white. Bases are empty. Kennedy steps in. That ball misses down and out. So Cook is now over for two at the plate. Here comes Kennedy. She's one for one so far. Got the scoring started for us last inning with her third homer of the year, a two-run blast to right center field. Which means her number's on the year now. A 429 batting average, a 419 on base percentage, an 893 slugging percentage and an OPS of over 1.3. Now, I'm not an analytics guru by any stretch, but uh, that's good. That's pretty solid. And, and to give you a little more in two out situations, as we have one here, she's batting 444. So. It's one high in the air again, deep, but should be caught and will be caught on the track by Gordon. Kennedy almost had home run number two. So White comes in, does her job, gets USM out of the inning. State though, a three run home run from Nadia Barbary, her first of the year. And they are on top by six after two here in Starkville. The number nine hitter, Neely McManus, followed by the leadoff batter in the order, Lindsay, and then the slugger, Borden. If anyone reaches, Taylor will do, or will be due back up for Coach Poole and the Golden Eagles. You find themselves down by six runs early. Still, though, a long way to go, Cody, in this one. Yeah, and you get an opportunity to get back to the top of the lineup, which is where we saw them, I don't want to say do some damage, but they were able to get some hits, able to get on base in that first inning. And for a minute, had, your, had you holding your breath if you're a Mississippi State fan from allowing runs in that first inning. However, Bulldogs were able to work their way out of it, but really caused some trouble early on, at least the top of the lineup for Southern Miss, and we'll see if they can do it again now. Marin technically got a strikeout against McManus just a moment ago to start this half inning. Ball was dropped briefly by Wesolowski, so State had to throw down the first base to get the out recorded officially there, but it'll go down as a strikeout, and that will be for Marin, strikeout number four tonight. So of the seven batters she's retired, four of them have been via the strikeout. And she is quickly out, nothing in two on the top of the order hitter, Lauren Lindsay, the USM first baseman, swing and a miss right there. Throw down, don't think he had to though. First base umpire Shane Jackson said it was clean, but just to be safe, they did anyway. And that's back-to-back -back strikeouts to begin the top of the third for Josie Marin. 
And it's just something about the way that she pitches, gets herself, gets herself out early and, and puts the batters in a tough position as it looks like she might do again and is able to get them to chase or strike them out. And that's why you see she already has five strikeouts. Marin in a groove. Listen, when you're up by six runs, you can afford to stand there and, and fill up that strike zone if that drop ball misses. They count one and one to Hannah Borden, who is getting closer and closer to becoming USM's all-time leading home run hitter. Has hit almost 40 home runs in her career in Hattiesburg. Has a couple of bombs already this season to go along with 15 hits overall. Big cut right there and just missed that one. Two balls and a strike on Borden who got a single. A line drive, base hit her first time up. So far the only hit of the ball game given up by Marin. That ball misses high and outside. And the count is full, three and two the count. On Borden with no one on and two gone, Taylor, right-handed hitter in the on-deck circle. Payoff pitch spoiled by Borden and will do it again. Got her swinging pitch looked to be a little inside and kind of had to cut at that ball. Able to keep the at-bat alive though. Borden hitting well over 300 on the year, 333 at the moment, and that will go up some more as she is now two for two tonight. And a really good at bat by the senior right-handed catcher, Hannah Borden. That's how we saw it in inning number one. You only had one out at that point. Now you have two in this inning, but just able to get a solid hit, puts it into center field on the ground and keeps the inning alive. Runner on at first is Borden with Taylor at the plate. Taylor reached on an error her first time up. Takes a big cut there and a ball up and away for strike one. Just got her chasing and even if she would have made contact, feels like it might have just gone straight into the dirt and would have had to been a play made in the infield. And Taylor is in a bit of a funk right now offensively. Hitting just 211, an on base percentage of just over 300, 318 to be exact. If, if USM wants their offense to get better, they're going to need Taylor to really pick it up. And she gets fooled badly there and strikes out quickly, swinging against Marin. Strikeout number six for Marin. She strikes. <laughs> Home half of the third in Starkville. Our score, Mississippi State six and Southern Miss zero. Alongside the award-winning Cody Blazak, I'm Anthony Craven. Great to be with you here on this Thursday evening as the 2024 Bulldog Invitational gets underway. Round Robin tournament featuring these two teams, obviously, but also the Trojans of Troy and the Braves of Alcorn State. I think, and Stanford, excuse me, there's five teams here. So Southern Miss, Mississippi State, Troy, Alcorn State, and Samford. And I think every team is going to be able to squeeze in at least five games on the weekend. Well, there's a whole lot of softball to be played in the, the next four days. I mean, Mississippi State has 
including this game tonight, six of them to play. You get a game tomorrow, and then you get two double headers, one Saturday, one Sunday, and obviously other games going on throughout the day, but a whole lot of action in News Park this weekend. So if you're a softball fan, this is a great weekend to be in Starkville. Yes. The weather, we think, will cooperate. It's going to warm up some as the weekend approaches, and hopefully we'll be able to dodge the rain as we get into the, the early days of March starting tomorrow. Hawkins draws a walk to lead off the bottom of the third. So one on and no one out for Aquana Brownlee, who takes strike one from Brooklyn White. Brownlee had a base hit and drove in a run her last time up. She's now batting 393 on the season. Off speed, high in the zone. I said off speed, that still had a lot of velocity to it. Just a lot of movement as well. One and one, the count on Brownlee, who has now driven in 10 runs this year. A veteran right-handed hitter from just up the road in Houston, Mississippi. One ball, two strikes the count. Hit swat that one hard, but foul and out of play to the right side. Brownlee, although she is down in the count, has only struck out one time this year in 28 at bats. It's impressive. Not a whole lot of players can manage that, but if you can, you'll take it. Every day of the week and twice on Sunday. <laughs> And again, White's ready with a one-two. Just missed, good take by Brownlee, and the count evens up. So far through 14 ball games, now ball game number 15 tonight for the Bulldogs, who are ranked as high as 21st in the country. A couple of things, you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Cody, the strikeout to walk ratio as White gets Brownlee to swing and miss. At an elevated ball, that was a fastball and had a ton of velocity on it. And Brownlee, a rare strikeout of the Bulldog senior. And that is what you call the announcer's jinx. One <laughs> Every strikeout time. on the season is now two. And, and I think all credit to Brooklyn White, who got put in in the last inning in a tough position. A freshman comes out and is just challenging batters and really is out there like she has nothing to lose. She's a freshman, has a lot of work on the season, and is like, I'm gonna go out here and just duel, and it's been fun to watch so far. That's now the 20th strikeout of the year recorded by the freshman right-hander in just over 27 innings. There's a bouncer over to second, throw to second in time. Relays, though, is not quite in time as Wes Olowski is able to hustle up the line and get to first base, but Hawkins is erased as USM gets the force out of the Bulldog lead runner at second. And there are two gone. I'll try to quickly get my point across that I was trying to make before Brownlee struck out and, and Wes Olowski reached on the footer's choice. And now Edwards steps up, swing and a miss, strike one. Is that the Bulldogs in the circle, really, really good strikeout to walk ratio. One of the best in the whole entire country at this juncture in the season. But offensively, they've done a really good job of drawing walks and getting on base and putting the ball in play and not striking out. And so when you add those two things together, plus they've cut down on the errors from last year to this year, that really was an issue a season ago. You throw it all together and you got yourself a recipe for success. Well, you talk about what they're doing in the circle and, and nationally they're number 
one in the nation in three categories, being strikeout to walk ratio, walks per seven in, walks per seven innings, and then walk rate as well. And if you lead the nation in those three categories, and you're not winning a bunch of ball games, you're doing something wrong. But they are winning those ball games, and it's been impressive to walk. I mean. Averaging 0.79 coming into this game, walks per game. It's impressive. At the dish, Edwards is fighting with a 2-2 two -two count, two gone, one on. That ball misses, and the count now full. USM trying to retire State here in the third without giving up a run. The Bulldogs scored a three in the first and three more in the second. And are currently enjoying a six run cushion. Ball lifted into right, ranging over, diving but unable to make the grab in foul territory is Taylor. Heck of an effort there, but Edwards will stay alive. We love the effort from Taylor Superman's in foul territory to try and make that catch. Yeah, and missed it by a step, it looks like. And that would have been a great way to get out of this inning after it looked like you might have a couple of runners on base. You only have the one at the moment, but you had a full count with two outs now. Ball up the middle to second. They're gonna get the force out at second. I think either way, they would have been fine there. K.K. Agner leads off the top of the fourth for the Golden Eagles. High fly ball deep to left. Should be caught, though, by St. Clair, and it is at the warning track as Agner gave it a ride. But she is retired quickly, and that's how the top of the fourth inning begins. Yeah, one pitch and solid contact. Might have gotten a little too much under it. If you would have hit it a little more straight, might have been able to go the distance, but St. Clair able to range over to the warning track and the foul line in that general area and make the play. The Bulldogs have made a change in the field as Riley Hole is now playing at first base. We're told that that will move Madison Kennedy to the DP spot and that the odd person out in that equation at the moment is Brownlee. So at the moment, Brownlee not in the lineup for State. Kennedy goes from first base to DP, and then Hole is your new first baseman. No other changes for State. It's still St. Clair in left, Sacco in center, Cook in right, Barbary at third, Edwards at short, Hawkins at second. Marin in the circle, Wesolowski behind the plate. Valdivia is the batter. Rihanna Valdivia, number 11, a junior, and a right-handed hitter, struck out looking, I'm sorry, struck out swinging her first time up. And she strikes out once again, swinging. So she has gone down swinging twice tonight. And that will give Josie Marin, by my count, eight, no, seven, seven strikeouts tonight. Just two base hits, both hits coming off the bat of the same player. And now it looks like we're gonna get a pinch hitter for Southern Miss. We'll start number 16, Maria Smith. will pick up a bat and will hit in place of the DP Fox. And we'll see if this, as the game goes on, we'll see if this is a straight switch or if it actually is just a pinch hit situation. The numbers for Smith on the year, a 158 average. A 19 at bats has three hits and has driven in one run. Swing and a miss. And the count evens up at a ball and a strike. 
Alongside Cody Blazak, I'm Anthony Craven. Six nothing our score, 21st ranked Mississippi State leading in-state rival Southern Miss. The Dogs used a couple of home runs to get a commanding lead early and so far it's held up. Look at that ball that just missed upstairs according to Shane Jackson. Bit of a change up. Marin comes right back with a nasty drop ball and gets the swing and a miss. And the count is going to be even at two and two. Doesn't get the call the previous pitch and that one just about goes in the dirt and gets her to swing on it. So you take what you can get sometimes. The two two same pitch. But this time, it found the right spot. She froze Smith, the pinch hitter. Strikeout number eight. We head to the home half of the fourth inning. Six nothing our score, 21st ranked Bulldogs lead. The Golden Eagles of USM. Brooklyn White back in the circle. The freshman reliever has done a good job tonight. In an inning and two thirds has retired just about every Bulldog hitter she's faced. And she'll now pitch to Briley St. Clair to lead off this half inning. Slow roller up the bag towards first, gloved and Lindsay will take it herself for out number one. Yeah, and Brooklyn White She's got herself two strikeouts, but she's been very smart with her pitches and playing to contact. A lot of these balls have been hit to the infield where a team can make the plays at first or second or wherever that play may be. We've seen a couple go out to the outfield, but otherwise just it hasn't been easy going for the Mississippi State hitters. Now the top of the order, Sacco is due up. Sacco's been on base once tonight. Drew a walk her last time up and scored on Barbary's three-run home run in the second. She grounded out to the shortstop. McManus, her first time up. Looking for her first hit of the ball game as she fouls back that pitch for a strike and she falls into the 0-2 hole on White. Sacco's average has dipped a little bit to 324. Still, though, every single batter in the lineup tonight for the Bulldogs hitting over 300. Yeah, and her average might have dipped a little, but I think the real thing to keep an eye on is that on base percentage, which is still over 500. Yeah. So <laughs> That's... average might have dropped a little bit, but still gets on base a lot. I mean, she was built to be a top of the order hitter. And so far is filling that role well. Hits one up the middle, gonna be a tough play. Throw to first is not quite in time. McManus did everything she could, but Sacco too fast up the line. And that'll be an infield single first hit tonight for Sierra Sacco. Yeah, and it looked like Sacco got a, a quick jump off of the hit and tough ball to field and just long strides to get her to first and is going to be safe on the play. Dogs have a runner on with just one out. First hit allowed by White since coming on in relief two innings ago. And she'll now pitch to Barbary, her hit her last time up is the difference in this ball game right now, a three-run home run. And that, that, that ball might still be in orbit somewhere. It I mean, was. <laughs> wow. Runner takes off, throw down, not in time. Even if it was, it was dropped by Valdivia at second. So stolen base number three tonight for Mississippi State, Sacco gets her first, and the Dogs have a runner on in scoring position. And credit to Borden again, getting the throw on time and in a place to where they can make the play and make the tag, just not able to do it quick enough. 
Uh, you can't ask for much more from your catcher. Yeah, the Bulldogs have gotten really good jumps on their three stolen base attempts tonight, all of them successful. But you're right, Borden's throws have been on the money all three times, just not quite in time. Yeah, you're, you're putting it low right where you need to make the catch and then make the tag and just off by a couple of seconds each time. Two and two the count on Barbary, who tonight is, check out this line, two for two, two runs scored, three runs driven in. Has upped her average on the year to 356. Fouls that one back to stay alive. On the year now, the Bulldog third baseman, 16 hits total. Which is the most on the team. So no sophomore slump so far for Barbary here in 2024. Fly ball, foul territory, could be a play. No, it drifts just out of play and off the top of the dugout there to our right. And so we'll do it again. Count remains even, two balls and two strikes as Lindsey gave chase and just ran out of room. Yeah, tracked the ball real well. And if she could have gotten to it, she probably would have been able to make the play just an obstacle in her way. Okay. Check swing and that ball misses down and out. And now the count's full. You've got got Cook in the on-deck circle. Here's that pitch again. And then you see clearly low and outside. Good take by Barbary. High fly ball. Fairly deep in center. Should be caught. Gordon makes the catch. Tagging and trying to go to third and getting there safely with a head first slide is Sacco. That's a risky play. They're going to say safe, but I like it. We have seen a bunch of these plays tonight that have been really, really close. Is able to make the play at the warning track and then get it over to third. Just the tag is not in time. Throw might have been a bit late, too, but a lot of close plays tonight. And Gordon has a good arm. But Sacco is so quick, has a really good first step and aggressively slid in head first. So Sacco has gotten herself over to the third base. Still though, USM just one out away from getting out of the inning as Cook steps in and fouls off the first pitch. Nothing and one to count. Looked like White took a little something off that pitch and it missed upstairs and the count evens up. Cook tonight's 0 for 2. Flew out in the first against Step. Struck out swinging her last time up in the second against White. Fouls that one back, strike two. One and two the count. So White is now a strike away from once again keeping the Bulldogs off the scoreboard. The Bulldogs have not scored since White came into the ball game in relief of the starter, Logan Stepp. This caused some issues, has just really not allowed them anything. Cook hits one over the head of Taylor in right. That will score Sacco from third. Stand up double with two outs for Cook. Her first hit of the ball game. And the dogs increase their lead. They're now on top 7-0. And it might just be me, but it just looks like an odd play. The ball looks like it's going to come down and looks like Taylor is going to be able to make the play. But the ball just keeps flying towards the wall. Just didn't drop until it went over her head. Just unfortunate for the right fielder. And another run added to the lead for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that ball carried much further off the bat than I thought it would. <laughs> I mean, initially it looked like it was going to fly straight to Taylor. And then 
as it continued to go, it was like, oh, maybe she'll have to make a running grab. And then the next thing you know, it's hitting the wall and over her head. Just an odd hit, but what a hit. I mean, Paige Cook, if she could have elevated that about four feet, would have had State's third home run of the ball game. Might have hit a car out in the parking lot. <laughs> no doubt. Riley Hall steps in, first at bat for her tonight. Did not get the start, but came on in relief as a defensive replacement at first base last half inning. Replacing Madison Kennedy defensively. The 0-1 on its way. And this is the outside corner. Count evens up. Hole on the year. A 214 average in 14 at bats has three hits. Has not, though, driven in any runs yet this year. A chance to change that right now with Cook. And actually, the Bulldogs have used or are using a pinch runner in place of Cook. Looks like number five, Jaden Burney, is running at second base. So Cook got the RBI double to right field. Now Burney at second with two gone. And the 2-1. That misses downstairs. Count is now 3-1 and one to hole with Hawkins. in the on-deck circle. We'll see if Hull is sitting back on the rise ball right here. Oh, she went downstairs and missed. The ball got away, so Bernie takes off for third, and State's got runners at the corners. The walk and I think a wild pitch. We'll see how they're gonna score it. And time is called by the Golden Eagles. So a big moment right here because I, I know it's a seven run ball game, but if State scores one more time in this at bat, then all of a sudden USM is down to their last three outs in their next at bat. Yeah, it puts Southern Miss in a, in a tough position and you kind of hate it for Brooklyn White who is came in in relief and has played really, really well. Just the one uh, allowed run. She's got two strikeouts, but otherwise, in my opinion, has played very, very well. Has made life difficult for the Bulldogs up until this inning where they've found a little bit more of momentum and have been able to get some hits and get on base. But even then, we've just seen some errors from the, uh, the outfield and the infield from Southern Miss that has allowed Mississippi State to keep this inning alive. At the plate now for the Bulldogs is the freshman second baseman, Salen Hawkins. She shows bunt, runner takes off for second, no one covering second, and that'll be an easy stolen base for Hull. Speaking of stolen bases, they're actually gonna give credit to Bernie for a stolen base of third. So they're gonna rule that she was already taking off. So that will not be scored. Okay, now they're gonna change it. Okay, that's, <laughs> I thought for a second, they, they may wanna change that and they just did. As I was talking about it, they changed it officially. Bernie advances on a passed ball. So charge Borden, the catcher with a passed ball, and now two on in scoring position, two gone. The pitch to Hawkins, taken for a strike. And the count should, oh, nope, did it miss? No, it was a strike, and the count's now two and one. Yeah, okay. I think it was, I think that was strike one, and we're sitting at two and one. For a second there, we had the scoreboard say one thing, and. Our home plate umpire, Shane Jackson, put up something different. Bouncing ball up the middle for a base hit. This should score two. Throw home, not in time. Throw out the second, is in time, however. So Hull and Bernie both score. Hawkins gets credit for a single. Trying to stretch it, though, and got thrown out at second base. Good throw 
by Borden to get the out there. Marin back out there for the top of the fifth inning alongside Cody Blazak. I'm Anthony Craven. Nine to nothing, our score, 21st ranked Mississippi State leading the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss here on a Thursday night in Stark Vegas. Bouncer foul over to third base. USM's got Gordon, Allen, and McManus due up here in the top of the fifth inning. They are down at the moment to their last three outs unless they can score in this at bat at least two runs. Trying to avoid being run ruled here in the opening ball game of the Bulldog Invitational sponsored by C Spire. Gordon checked the swing, didn't matter. That was called for a strike on the inside corner. A lot of work for Southern Miss as well. I mean, Josie Marin has just really had her way tonight in the circle and able to find the strike zone, able to make the batters chase, has just really had her way. I mean, we're five innings in and she's only pitched 52 pitches. Yeah. I mean, just hasn't had to do a whole lot, just getting the calls she needs and having her way. An efficient night for sure. Over to third, gloved by Barbary. Not an easy play, but Barbary gets the job done. Five to three over to hole for the putout, and Gordon is retired. Uh, Cody, you, you mentioned the efficient work of Josie Marin. And here she is tonight, just from the get-go, found the strike zone early and often. Yeah, eight strikeouts on the night. And you see just the combination of pitches she uses, some drop balls, some rise balls, is able to paint the corners and just has had her way with everything. Safe at first base is Allen on a ball that was rolled out to the brand new second baseman for State, Kat Wallace. And Wallace threw it about as fast as she could, but good speed by Allen, the number eight hitter. And the Golden Eagles have a runner on with just one out here in the fifth inning. Yeah, and here's what we saw a moment ago, just not in time, a slow rolling ball awkward to, to Cat Wallace. And the only way you make that play is if you have a running start towards the infield so you can snag that ball and toss it to first a little sooner. I mentioned Wallace, the second baseman, replacing Hawkins here in the fifth inning. The Bulldogs also have kept the runner, Bernie, who was inserted as a pinch runner in the home half of the fourth inning and scored on Hawkins' RBI base hit. It kept her in the ball game. She's now playing in right field. So Wallace, your new second baseman, Bernie, your new right fielder those are the two defensive changes for the bulldogs gordon grounded out to begin the inning then allen got an infield single so usm has at the plate in the form of neely mcmanus the player representing the second run which could Keep the ball game alive. Grounder out to short. Edwards flips the second to get the force out there of Allen. Relay throw is not in time, so McManus will reach on a fielder's choice, but there are now two gone. And the Bulldogs one out away from ending this one early on a Thursday night. Yeah, I was able to make the play at second and might have been a little bit of blocking to make that, that, that throw, that, but that, that happens. That was clearly interference, <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you gotta have a little fun with it and try and help your team out. And was able to keep this game alive and prevent the double play. It looks like. Man, I'm not sure it would have mattered because McManus has good speed up the line, but still, that was. I 
and she almost waited until she was on the bag before she slid. That was <laughs> gamesmanship. Sometimes you got to make smart plays for your team. The batter at the plate is Amaya Hall. Hall, a junior. She throws right, but bats left. We have not seen her at the plate tonight, so this will be a pinch hitter. Batting at the top of the lineup in place of Lindsay. Snap throw to first, and getting back to the bag easily is McManus. So Hall represents the last chance for USM to keep the ball game alive. Only has two at-bats on the year, but is one for two. So a 500 hitter, technically, on the season. Small sample size, but we'll see if the sample size is the real deal. And her one hit on the year, a triple. Not half bad. If she can duplicate that, that would give USM their first run of the ball game. Runner was tagged out. Yes, she was. So the Bulldogs off the bouncing ball, hit by Hall, get the out of McManus. I couldn't tell, they called her out 